Hello folks, this is Scott with Dallas Paint Correction and Auto Detailing. This is kind of going to be a scientific <coughs> view or look into rinseless washing. And I've got O&R here, made by Optimum. This is their No Rinse Wash and Shine. And here is OptiSeal. I want to talk about rinseless washing. What is rinseless washing? Well, obviously the, the word itself, rinseless. You're not going to rinse the car off first. You're just going to go in and use Optimum. You're going to use one ounce to two gallons worth of water. You're going to use maybe their big red sponge as your wash media, or maybe you like Gary Dean's method. You're going to use a microfiber towel to be able to rub or glide the O&R solution across the surface of the panel and clean the panel. O&R, or Optimum, if you watch their videos on how to use this stuff, they like to use three words. They like to use the word science, they like to use the word encapsulate, they like to work, use the word called emulsifying. Let's look at these three words. Why do they use the word science a lot? Because a lot of people will tell O&R or Optimum, hey, I, my spider senses are going off. I don't like going in and doing a rinseless wash without rinsing the car off first. And they say, ah, oh, that's because you don't understand the science. We'll get into that. They also like to use the word encapsulate and to emulsify. Those two words have been around for a long time, well before O&R came into the picture. In fact, water which is Earth's natural solvent, if you will, has the ability to be able to emulsify and encapsulate dirt and dust. So you're using one ounce to two ounces or two gallons of water, right? So what O&R is doing is taking the natural ability of water to emulsify and encapsulate dirt. Yes, the surfactants within O&R plus its polymer concoction can kind of exaggerate the moment and use that water much more effectively and, eff and efficiently to emulsify and encapsulate things. But I want to talk about what's on the paint if you do not rinse the car off first. What's on the paint? Well, you have dust and dirt. You also have traffic film. If you've been following my channel, you've heard me talk about traffic film to the point you're probably nauseous about it. But what else is on the paint besides dust, dirt, and traffic film? There are metals lying on the surface of the paint. This is really, really crucial when it comes to the science and it comes to O&R's claims of being able to emulsify and encapsulate things that are on the panel. O&R never talks about the fact that you have metals on your paint when you do a rinseless wash. Maybe they will in the future because I think they need to be transparent. They need to be more scientific, if you will. Why do we have, first of all, we have dust and dirt, right? We have traffic film, which is kind of sticky on the surface. The brake, the braking system from this truck, my customer hits his brakes. A lot of that brake dust flies off and sticks to the dust, dirt, and the traffic film on the car. Plus, all cars create some form of static charge, so that's how bonded, that's how metals like to try to bond to the paint. He's also driving in traffic, and he's got cars next to him kicking off brake dust, and they're sticking to his car. His braking system is throwing dust onto to their cars. So what happens is before you go in to do your rinseless wash with O&R, you're going to have dust, dirt, traffic film, and a lot of metal sitting on the surface of the panel superficially. I use that word carefully because there are some metals that will begin to bond. But my question to you is, do all metals that lie or land on the surface of the paint, will they bond where you need a clay bar to remove them? The answer is no. In fact, what happens with a lot of these metals is they just sit superficially on the paint because of the dust, the dirt, the traffic film, but some of them will begin to bond not so tenaciously where we need a clay bar. What ends up happening is, I'm going to give you an example. It's like walking into a cave, right? You've got that stalagmite. Is that what they call it that hangs from the ceiling of the cave? Some of the stalagmite can be so tenaciously attached to the ceiling, you can grab it and hang from it and you can't bust it off. That's kind of like the bonded metal on your car where you're going to need a clay bar to remove it. Or maybe use something like Iron X, an industrial fallout remover that can dissolve metals. Or you might have little stalagmites inside that cave that you can just bust off with your hand, just lightly bust off. Some some metals on your paint will begin to do that. Some of them are lying there superficially. Some are beginning to bond and they're like that little stalagmite kind of just dangling there on the surface. Not, not they haven't made a true permanent bond to the paint. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your big red sponge that O&R loves, right? You're going to take your one ounce to two gallons of water, dip this into the bucket. You're going to come across the panel. Again, we haven't rinsed the car, right? We're doing this the way Optimum wants us to do it. It's a rinseless wash. 
you're going to take the big red sponge and go across the surface of the panel. You're laying down lubrication. You're also taking advantage of the fact that you've got water in the solution plus the polymers and the surfactants within O&R. So you're emulsifying and encapsulating dirt. But what you're not doing is emulsifying and encapsulating metal. It can't do that. O&R could never do that. You also have to realize that the metals that you are dragging this big red sponge through. Some of them are superficial. Some of them are kind of hanging there, slightly bonded to the paint. Your big red sponge is gonna pop them off. Tick, tick, tick as you go through. And the lubrication on the panel may not be sufficient enough to overpower the metal's ability to scratch the paint. That's just science there. I wanna talk about that. That's very important. Now I wanna talk about, you've gone through the process with your big red sponge. You've got water on the panel. In fact, a lot of it is water that's sitting on the panel and you've got some polymer um, concoction from O&R also sitting on the panel. You're going to take OptiSeal. Optimum recommends using this as a drying agent. It's okay as a drying agent, but it's not the best. And I wanna talk about the science. This is a true paint sealant. This has no chemical fillers within it, but it does have, or I should say it has no fillers within it, but it does have a chemical carrier. The polymers in this bottle need to have a chemical to be able to transfer from this bottle and onto your paint, and that chemical carrier needs to kind of flash and evaporate so the polymers can bond to the paint. Folks, because it's a chemically carried paint sealant, you're now spraying it into a debris field of water. You are greatly reducing its ability to be able to bond to the paint. O&R is pretty transparent about it, but that's really bad science. Why do I say it's bad science? Well, it's bad science because there are companies out there besides Optimum that actually compete within the rinseless wash industry that think outside the box far more than Optimum. There are companies out there that give you a paint sealant that is like OptiSeal, but it's water-based. Why? Because they knew you were going to be spraying it into a debris field of water and also, also their polymer concoction left on the surface. So when you sprayed a water-based sealant into water, it doesn't greatly diminish like a chemically carried paint sealant like OptiSeal. Folks, do I like O&R? It's okay. It's not the best rinseless wash system on the planet. Their science isn't solid. A lot, of their science, a lot of their science can be kind of debunked if you really apply critical thinking. Also realize you have metals on the paint that align there superficially. Also some of them have begun to bond a little bit in your big red sponge or whatever wash media you use, you're gonna peg them off. I hope, I have actually seen evidence that there's not enough lubrication with O&R to be able to overcome that metal that you might be dragging across the paint. So you're drastically are increasing, are increasing the risk of scratching the paint as well. There's a reason why your little spider senses go off when you do a rinseless washing if you don't rinse first. And that spider senses is trying to help you. It's, you may not know all the facts, but it's going, hey, you gotta look at the bigger picture. You gotta look at all the science. And I just wanted to bring that into the view here. Rinseless washing is the second riskiest wash we could do. Second to what? Free flowing water or a power washer. It's great to flush those metals off the paint. But it's really important, in my opinion, we have to understand all the science. O&R does not discuss the metals that might be on the paint. They won't discuss its ability to emulsify or encapsulate those metals because they can't. It's metal. The surfactants within this and the polymers aren't strong enough to emulsify or break down metals. It's just the case. That's the true science to all of it. Do I like this product? Yes, it's okay. I know better rinseless wash systems out there because there's companies that think outside the box far more than Optimum. Again, I'm not trying to offend anybody, but as consumers or as pro detailers or even car enthusiasts, it's really up to us to see the bigger picture. It's kind of like what Ronald Reagan said, trust but verify. Well, with a lot of auto detailing products, you're better off verifying before you trust. And it's just my opinion, folks. It's not the worst rinseless wash system on the planet. It's cheap, highly attractive to pro detailers because it's so cheap. It is effective to some extent, but there's a lot of little holes within their science. And there are better products, and I'll talk about them in the future. I love you all. I hope that helps you out.